it says I'm live it says that everything is working just going to make sure my camera is actually on and awake and ready to do this when I take my camera outside sometimes it's uh it's not happy it likes being inside it's an indoor camera that's a little joke by the way hey we'll be starting in about 25 seconds I'm just going to make sure everything is working properly we are outside on this beautiful day June 3rd 2023 and uh we'll start in about nine seconds for real I know it's kind of already started but we'll start in five seconds for real I will welcome all of you to one well hello everyone and welcome to this outdoor English lesson if this is your first time here this is an English lesson where you can ask me questions and I try really hard to give a good answer <laughs> sometimes I give good answers sometimes I give the best answer I possibly can but this is a time where if you have a question you can use the link that's in the chat wherever that is on your screen it's also in the description below um, you can ask a question and I will attempt to answer it so again we are outside it's a beautiful day I will give you a view of I decided to go with road cam today instead of river cam so you can see the river behind me just a little bit right here this is the river um, I put the bench out if you want to imagine that you're sitting there looking at the river and then facing the other way so behind the camera is actually the road you can't really see the road but you'll be able to see vehicles when they drive by I think I hear a vehicle coming now we'll have confirmation in a moment yes a couple of cars going by on the road so yes I will answer your questions few rules I'm a I'm a teacher in real life so I like to make rules and give rules please use the chat for fun English conversations between each other if you have a question don't ask it in the chat I don't look at the chat for questions please use the form and I will answer your question as quickly as I possibly can hopefully everything is working hopefully <laughs> sorry I'm laughing because Jen just walked by and she ducked when she walked by the road cam so that I wouldn't catch her so she's working hard on the flower farm this morning when I'm done I will get back to helping her as well but let's look at a question should we get started let me say hi to a few people Brent's here from speak English with this guy just finished up his live stream about Mount Rushmore you can probably watch that on repeat I'm not sure how Brent does it over there uh know that is here Ruslan is here William Lopez Nita Raquel uh mode eggs is here hi mode eggs Dave the Canadian is here to moderate the chat to make sure everything is civilized and civil hi to Freddie Wolf know that Daniel um let's see here Madi is here good to see Madi as well and I think I'm going to start repeating names if I keep going I know Lolly Lolly was here earlier I'm sure that Lolly Lolly is still here as well uh but let's start on questions should we do that let's get the first question on the screen here we go so you can have a little view of the road while I find the first question from Ruslan hello dear teacher Bob notice it's a little windy today you can see there's lots of movement hello dear teacher Bob no questions today I just want to thank you for such nice lessons especially outdoor ones the landscape is awesome best wishes sir yeah thank you um I'm glad that you are here talking about the landscape if you go and look at the thumbnail from the video a month ago compared to the thumbnail from today oh you just got part of Jen's hat I caught her just a little bit as she went by um it's very green here it has really really um changed in the last four or five weeks everything is green the lawn is green the trees have leafed out it is very very beautiful here I'm quite happy that things are growing nicely this year uh next question Natalia hi Bob my word today is discern discern is closer to recognition or seeing could you please give an example thanks in advance so when you need to discern something you need to look at it and you need to think about it and you need to come to a conclusion or a decision so when the end of the year comes we need to discern 
which student has the highest grade. So mathematically, we can discern that. We also need to discern which student um, had the best attendance. We need to discern which student was the happiest student. We give different awards. So when you say discern, you are definitely uh, figuring something out or determining something. Let's get the official meaning of discern for a moment. Having or showing good judge. Oh, no, sorry. That's discerning. We want discern. To distinguish something or someone with difficulty by sight or with other senses. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you could do it that way as well. I think there's a different meaning though. Yes, here we go. The simple meaning of discern. To recognize or identify by distinction or to separate, to discriminate, to decide. So there's a lot of meanings. But yeah, you can use discern when talking about seeing as well. Like when it's foggy, it's, ha- it's hard to discern who's in front of you when you're driving. Sorry, I spent a lot of time on that question. I should move on. Thanks for the question though. Mr. Azaz, hi Bob. Why can't I understand many songs? Is it very common for Americans to have to look up the lyrics to songs? Yes, very common. In fact, when I was young, we didn't have the internet. So I couldn't look up um, lyrics. So there's a thing called misheard lyrics. So there's certain songs that when people sing along, they sing the wrong lyrics because they don't know the real ones. So yes, it is very common for Canadians and Americans and all English speakers to look up the words to a song occasionally because they're hard to understand. From Andre Padron, hello, Mr. Bob, please explain. Ladder and later, bring your kids to school versus take your kids to school. I might get a banana versus I could get a banana. So ladder versus later. So if I'm going to do something this afternoon, I'm going to do it later today. Okay. I'm going to do it later today. Um, Later today, I'm going to go to town and get some groceries. That's a pretty standard thing for me to do. Um, But ladder refers to like the last of something. So if I say, um, do you like bananas or apples? You could say, oh, I like the ladder which means you like apples, the second thing that I mentioned. Bring your kids to school and take your kids to school mean the same thing. On Monday morning, I'm going to bring my kids to school. On Monday morning, I'm going to take my kids to school. And then I might get a banana versus I could get a banana. Pretty similar as well. What are you having for lunch? I forgot my lunch. I might go to the grocery store. I might get a banana or I could get a banana. So you're kind of you haven't quite decided what you're going to do yet, but it's highly likely that you will get a banana. Next question from Renata. Let me check my audio here while I give you guys a view of the road. I just wanted to make sure as we're a minute or so into the lesson. Well, that actually sounds quite clear for being outside and it being windy. So I'm happy about that. Renata. Oh. What's going by? Let's see. Large truck. Sorry, I'm, always, I'm still a kid at heart. I'm still fascinated by large trucks that go by on my road. Um, hi, Bob. Could you please explain the term diopter, diopter? I don't know this term. When you go to the ophthalmologist's office, does he or she ever mention it? Diopters, diopters. Thank you. No, I don't know what that is. Um, let's see here. I'm sure it's something to do with how open your eye is or something. Uh, the unit of power equal to the reciprocal focal length of a lens. Yes, I am not going to be the right person to answer this question, Renata. You will need to uh, find someone who is more of an expert on eyes and lenses. And maybe someone in the chat is uh, able to do that. Sorry, I failed on the first question where I failed today. Um, from Penny, what is your opinion? Canada, US. Nice to see Canadian and US warships navigating freely freely through international waters. So what is my opinion on um, Canada versus the US? I'm not sure if that's the first part of the question. I'll answer it that way though. Canada and the US have been friends. Our countries have been friends for a very long time and we are good neighbors. That would be the best description I would give. Uh, Canadians and Americans are very good neighbors. Our countries help each other out as often as we can. And we do fight sometimes, but neighbors fight. Like not war, like we argue sometimes. That's a better way to describe it. Lolly Lolly says, Bonjour, Bob. I am confused when I have to assume and presume. Could you help me please? 
So they're very similar. When you assume something, it means you think it's true, but you don't have a lot of facts. When you presume something, I think you have a few more facts, but I think they might mean almost the same thing. Um, I use assume a lot. I don't use presume very often. If you're looking for how common they are, assume and presume. Yeah, it autofills on Google, so it must be so assume means to assume with very little facts, but simply opinion. Presume implies that you are more confident or you have some evidence. So I guess if you presume, um, so if I saw Jen put water in here yesterday, I would presume there's water in here today because I have kind of a good idea, but I could assume there's tea or I could assume there's coffee if I don't have previous facts. Sorry, I got thirsty in the middle of answering that question. So I'm not sure I answered it as best as I could at the end there. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Andrea or Andrea. There's a lot of pronunciations for that name. What is the difference in English spoken in United Kingdom and the English spoken in Canada or USA? Thanks. So Canadian and American English sound very similar. There are a few vowel sounds that are a little different. I mean, even in the United States, there are different um, ways of pronouncing words, but generally Canadian English and American English is very similar. Uh, in the United Kingdom, they do have a bit of an accent and a lot of regional accents as well. So um, I would say Canadian and American English are very similar. And then uh, English in the United Kingdom would be like our, like they're like a cousin of us. Sorry, there's a spider right here. I'm just going to let him free. Uh, it's a cuz they're cousins of us, so the language is a little uh, sounds a little different. Unso, hi, dear teacher Bob. How are you doing? Do you share interesting or funny comments and moments you come across on your channel with your wife and kids? Bye. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'll say, hey, you should see um, this happened in the live stream or that happened in the live stream. Uh, a few weeks ago, I ran out of the room to do something during a live stream. And then we watched that later because it was actually quite funny to see. Eduardo. Hi, teacher Bob. I saw an ad for sunglasses that said, wrap up your summer rotation. What does this phrase really mean? Thanks. So that wouldn't be that common here to say, wrap up your summer rotation. We might say, wrap up your summer planning, wrap up your preparations for summer. But wrap up means to finish. So when you wrap something up, you're finishing it. And I would say this probably means finish up purchasing the things you need for summer. Um, I wouldn't use the word rotation though. I would probably use preparation or uh, wrap up your summer. Wrap up. Time to wrap up preparing for summer. That's what I would say. Get your suntan lotion, your sunglasses, your big floppy hat. Get all of those things because summer is coming. Mode says, thanks in advance. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Thank you very much. We know Yaroslav wasn't able to make it today. So Mode is using his intro. Uh, I had to think of a question to keep my word to Yaro. Awesome. Please explain the difference between too many times and one too many times. And when you would use one and two, skip a few. Um, when you would use one, two, skip a few. Well, maybe that's a different question at the end, but I can definitely talk about too many times and one too many times. So if I said I did something too many times, like I could say, oh, um, let's see, what's a good example of this? If I was moving heavy boxes, I could say, oh, I did that too many times and now I'm sore. Okay. So I did something repetitively. I did it too many times and now I have a minor inconvenience. I would probably use one too many times if I injured myself or if something more serious happened. Like I lifted 100 boxes and when I lifted the last box, I lifted one, it was one too many times and then I pulled a muscle and my arm is now injured. So they are kind of interchangeable, but to me, I would use one too many times when it ended badly, right? Like, oh, I drove down, I went the wrong way down the one way street one too many times and then I got a ticket from the police. So it's kind of like when there's grave consequences at the end. Uh, and when would you use one, two, skip a few? I don't, I don't, I'm not really familiar with that phrase. I'm going to move along. I'm going to pretend 
I answered the whole question and move along to the next one. Hilton, how's the fire out of control situation in Canada? Not good. In my province, things are okay. I live in the province of Ontario, but out east and out west, am I pointing the right direction? No, that's east. Out east, out east and out west, things are not good. So um, hopefully they can get things out of control. What I will say is this. I read a news story this morning and they said 700 firefighters from other countries, from some of your countries, are coming to Canada to help fight the forest fires. So thank you. If you are sending firefighters to Canada, we really, really appreciate that. So I will thank all of you who are sending firefighters. That is awesome. Let's see here. Let me have a sip and I'll get back to the question. And let me see if there's a bug in my... I don't have a canopy today. So things are going to be falling a little bit. In fact... There are a lot of maple keys falling right now. These are maple keys. Um, the kids sometimes call them helicopters too because when you drop them, well, that one didn't work very well, but they spin. But the tree above me is dropping. These are maple, they're the seeds, but we call them keys. Um, what was I going to do? Have a sip of water. So yeah, I don't have my canopy above me. So the lighting looks a little different as well, but uh, that's okay. Let's see here. I'm B. Hello, Teacher Bob. Do people in your area do outdoor activities and why? Yes. In fact, in Canada, we do outdoor activities year round. In the winter, people go snowshoeing or skiing or downhill skiing. In the summer, people on the river have started to kayak or canoe. Uh, people go fishing. People play soccer right now. There's a lot of soccer. Um, basically everything you can think of that you can do outside, people are definitely doing outside right now in Canada. From Nita, hello, teacher Bob. I have a question for you. What are you going to do when your kids don't have school? So my kids are actually getting older. And so some of them will have jobs this summer. So what am I going to do? I'm going to drive my kids to work. In Canada, you can get a job before you have your driver's license. So this morning, I actually brought one of my kids to work. That is going to be one of my main jobs this summer, bringing kids to work at different places. My one kid has a job at a store right now. So I went to town this morning to bring him to work. Hiroki, I like Australian English and would like to learn Australian English phrases and expressions. How do you think I should learn them? So there's someone called Ozzy Pete. He's an English teacher on YouTube and he specializes in teaching Australian English. Now, Australian English and Canadian English are very similar. If Pete and I had a conversation, we would be able to understand each other no problem. But there probably are some very unique Australian phrases you would want to learn. So look for him. Uh, his name is Ozzy Pete. I will put his name in the chat for a sec. Um, Ozzy Pete. Do a search for Ozzy Pete. Um, I think you'll be able to find him. Let me see if I can actually find Ozzy Pete for a sec because he might have a slightly different channel name. Ozzy Pete. Ozzy English is what it's called. Yes, there it is. Um, and he has a podcast as well. I'll put that in the chat for a sec. Um, there you go. Now you will know where to go in order to learn some Australian English. Um, seem to be clicking all the right wrong buttons here for a sec. From Simon, the next question. Hi, could you explain what is the difference between everyone and everybody, someone and somebody, please? So we do use these interchangeably quite often. There's a party and everyone is gonna go. There's a party and everybody's going to go. Someone left the peanut butter out on the counter. Somebody left the peanut butter out on the counter. So I think in informal terms, you shouldn't worry about it. There probably is a difference. I'm not thinking of it right now. But um, yes, everyone loves chatting during the live stream. Everybody loves chatting during the live stream. Someone just 
uh, joined. Somebody just joined. So thank you, Oscar87, for joining and for helping me with an example there. So I use them interchangeably and I don't know why I would choose one over the other. I'll have to do a little bit of research on that. From Ivan, hello, Bob. Do you love fruits? I love bananas. Yesterday, I did eat an apple. That's rare. I'm not really an apple eater unless it's a honey crisp. I really like that variety of apple. But uh, yes, I definitely like fruit. I like bananas. Um, I like peaches. Um, peaches are really yummy in a smoothie. When you put frozen peaches in a blender with bananas, and I usually put some spinach in, which is not fruit, that's a vegetable. Uh, very, very yummy. Very, very tasty. Uh, let's see here. From Pin Sunshine. Hello, Teacher Bob. I don't have any question today, but I really like every lesson you've taught me. Thank you, teacher, and have a nice day. Well, you too. Thank you for the kind words. I do enjoy making the lessons and a lot of people enjoy watching them. So I always describe it as a win-win situation. I have fun making them. You enjoy watching them. We are all happy in the end. Very cool. Let's see. So Nima has a question. Hello, dear teacher Bob. When we talk about someone whose gender is not known, which pro pronoun should we use for it? Thank you so much, sir. So we often say they and them when we don't know. Like um, if someone said, my cousin is coming, I could say, oh, are they going to bring their dog? And I'm not referring to more than one person. I'm just using a pronoun that allows me to not... I don't need to know, right? Um, if someone said, I'm trying to think of another example. Um, yeah, that was probably a good example. My cousin is coming over and I could say, oh, are they going to bring their dog? So if, it, if I knew it was a guy or girl, I could say, are, is he going to bring his dog or is she going? But if I don't know, I could just say, are they going to bring a dog or their dog? That would definitely work. Augusto from Italy. I'll be starting in 10 minutes versus I'll start in 10 minutes. What's the different meaning in your English mind? When would you use one sentence instead of the other? Ciao, Bob. Um, I often use the first one. I think that one might be a little bit more common. I'll be starting in 10 minutes. Um, I'll be starting in 10 minutes sounds a little more informal. And when I say I'll start in 10 minutes, it's very direct and very clear. So one is a little lighter sounding like, hey, I'll be starting in 10 minutes or hey, we'll be starting dinner in 10 minutes. But if I say, hey, we'll start in 10 minutes, it's, it's a little more direct. If I was talking to students who were all sitting in their desks, I might say, okay, we'll be starting the lesson in a minute. Just let me get organized here. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of spiders today, by the way. This one doesn't want to go away. Maybe it's the same spider the whole time. Um, but if, there we go. Um, if students were kind of rowdy, I might say, hey, sit down. I'm starting. No, I said it again, didn't I? I'll start in 10 minutes. Mm, yeah, one's just more direct. That's what I would say. Uh, let's see here. My God says, hi, Bob. Is your accent close to British or American accent? It is close to an American accent. I would say I have a North American accent. Um, people from the Northern United States and people from Canada sound very similar for the most part. Um, Ario. Hola, Mr. Bob. How are you doing? Glad to see you again on the live stream. Have you ever experienced culture shock? Me, when I saw a baby cry, a baby crying contest in Japan, I loved it. Um, I have experienced culture shock, like just a small amount. I lived in Quebec. And in Quebec, people speak French. It's a province in Canada where people speak French. And I lived there for um, nine or 10 months, not quite a year. And when I moved back, I went out with my friends and we sat in a restaurant and they were all talking in English really quickly. And I had trouble understanding them. So that's the closest I've come to, I would say that was a little bit of culture shock, just a tiny, tiny bit of culture shock. Uh, let's see here. It's getting quite windy now. Should I check the audio to make sure? You know, when I stop talking, the mic turns off. And you can probably hear that, I would think. 
I'm just going to listen to myself for a moment. I'm talking about culture shock, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, you should check the audio, Bob. Yeah. Everything sounds great. I'm always surprised how well having a, you know, a mic cover, this is called a dead cat or a mic screen or a mic cover. It really helps with the wind. Question from Vlad. Do you have a favorite opera or musical? I love Notre Dame de Paris, especially the voice of Daniel Lavoie. Have a nice day. That is not my um, typical uh, kind of music to listen to. So I don't have a favorite opera or musical. I hope to in the future. I think something just flew in my eye. Should we do a mini English lesson about this? So some, I have something in my eye. That's how you say it. Um, I'm kind of rubbing my eye because something hit my eye. I'm sure I'll be fine in a moment. I'm just going to keep, this is probably the wrong thing to do. I'm going to rub my eye. Now my eye is tearing up a bit. So again, a little English lesson here. Bob has something in his eye. There. I think I got it out. There we go. I can, I can teach English in any moment at any time. That's, that's my current uh, challenge for the week. Stop, drop, and teach English. Here we go. Next question from Shaheen. Hi, I have come across the phrase several times, shed the light on something. We, we usually say shed light on something. Does it have direct meaning or is, does it have a metaphorical meaning? Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with light at all. It means when you give more information. If someone at school said, um, hey, there's a bunch of people in the gym and I don't recognize them. Can someone shed some light on this? They're basically saying, can someone give me more information? Can you shed some light on this? So great question. Very common phrase, by the way. Um, we were at market on Thursday and it was a little bit confusing. And then we had some questions and the market manager was able to shed some light on things for us. So that was very, very nice. Let's see. From Filippo or Filippo. Hi, Bob. Thank you for your amazing work. My question today is, do you like driving manual gear cars? I tried an automatic and it's so boring. Thank you. So in Canada, most cars, um, most cars are automatic transmission. Some cars are what we call standard or manual transmission. In Canada, we use the word standard. Like, can you drive standard? We also call it stick. Can you drive stick? Um, and I would say most, whoa, that's a limousine. Sorry, I, I, I was distracted by the road because there was a limousine going by. Most likely someone famous, I would think. Um, let's see here. Yes, we call them standard or manual. Most people do not know how to drive them. Most people only know how to drive automatic. Uh, from William, Teacher Bob, hi again. My question is that I have sometimes heard help and help out. Can you tell us the differences? Thanks. So I have like a table, my laptop, my camera, my other camera. This morning, Jen helped me bring it all out. This morning, Jen was able to help out. So when you help someone, it's a direct verb. When you help out, it also is a direct verb. Um, but you can also use help out to describe the situation. Can you come and help out tomorrow? Can you come and help tomorrow? Yeah, we're serving food to 100 people. Can you come and help? Can you come and help out? They're very similar. They are very, very similar. It's nice when people help when you have a lot of work to do. It's nice when people help out when you have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I'm going to go with they're the same. Um, so Madi is saying stick car. We would say, can you drive stick? Then it might be regional. It might just be my part of Canada, but that is how we would refer to it. Uh, Mode says, this is really starting to become a lesson where Bob the Canadian keeps flicking insects off himself and his equipment. Yeah, they're all gone now. They must have got the message from me. They must understand that I don't want them around. From Madi, hello to everyone through your screen. No question, but I want my sentence to be read. I'm going to fix that because a long time didn't show up here. That's awesome. I'm glad it's all working the way it is supposed to for you. So sometimes I don't understand when things don't work. So I'm glad it's working. 
Uh, Zhu Yuan, Juan, 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 Zhu Yuan. Do you, have you ever been, little fix there, have you ever been to an Asian country? No, but someday I would love to see a lot more countries in the world. Right now, Jen and I are too busy working, growing flowers, raising children, a little too busy to do a lot of traveling. Um, let's see here. From Vitaly, how, how you think, I'm going to just fix this a bit. Do you think it's possible to learn English from school? I think learning English in school is a great place to start. I think at a certain point when you're learning a language, learning it in a classroom stops being effective and it's good to go and live in a country where people speak that language. I currently have a few students from Ukraine. Um, and I think the experience of being in an English speaking classroom is very, very helpful for them. Uh, learning in a classroom is great, but at a certain point, you either need to talk to an English speaker regularly or live in an English speaking country if you can. That's, that's ideal. That is an ideal way to learn a language. Hey, I'm going to go with... Let's see here. I'll leave it on this screen for a sec. I'm going to go to members only chat. By the way, if you are not a member, you don't need to leave. You can hang out for 10 minutes. Members only chat only lasts for 10 minutes. And during that time, members can ask questions directly in the chat and I will read them. I will also continue to answer questions from the form. Let me have a little sip of water here and I will get a question back on the screen. Here we go. Matt Suze. Hi, could you explain what's the difference? Little fix there. What's the difference between at the beginning and at the outset? Thanks. Outset is simply a little more formal. You know, um, we were at the party and at the outset, they didn't have enough food. We were at a party and at the beginning, they didn't have enough food. They mean the same thing. Outset just sounds a little more formal to me, a little more serious and from the beginning is a little more informal and casual um, and I would say at the beginning is more common than at the outset. Let's see here. Judith. Hi Bob. How do you call those words which have the same letters like teacher and cheater? I think they're anagrams of each other. What are anagrams? I think that's what it is. A word or phrase or name formed by rearranging the letters. Yes. So I would say they are anagrams of each other. So if you take the words or the letters in teacher and rearrange them without hitting your microphone, rearrange them, you can spell a new word. I'll do one more question from the form and then I will get to the members in the chat. Fox talking about food. Can you say words? So I have to say croissant twice. So it's croissant or croissant. In English, we do not pronounce that word properly. So if I go to the grocery store as an English speaker, I would buy croissants. I would buy bagels. I would buy pastries or a pastry. And one more word, strive. My example, I strive to study these difficult words, croissant, bagel, pastry. Thank you from Fox. So there you go. Hey, from the chat, John Wedge says, hello, Bob, just listening again and having fun with everyone here. Don't forget to fix the farm's gate if you didn't do it yet. Yes, I do need to fix a gate. I also need to bring in the bales of hay. You can't quite see them. Yeah, they're kind of blurry. I have to bring in the hay later today. My neighbor came and made really big bales of hay. I have to lift them with the tractor. Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. Which one is more common, formerly or in the past? Thanks a lot. I would say in the past, yes. Um, so in the past, I did four live streams a month on Saturdays. Now I just do one, which works better for me. Maybe not for you, but for me. Uh, Lolly, how are Oscar and Walter? I would like to see them one day. They are out with Jen right now. They are both healthy and happy. Walter though, we just had three really hot days. And because Oscar is a black dog, he gets really hot in the sun. So he has been laying in the shade a lot. So Walter has been laying in the shade. Mode says, hi, Bob, have a sip. Check if there's anything on you, then answer this. Will the words analog and eyelet make part two of yesterday's lesson? Possibly, yes. 
I could think about that. Islet. There's something else too. Eglet? Islet? Yes. Let me see. An islet would be a good one. Yes, on a shoe. There's definitely islets. Um, I will put that in my notes. And about the check if there's anything on you. Do you, Were any of you here the year where I had caterpillars crawling on me to, during my English lesson? Uh, there are no caterpillars today. But I think two years ago, uh, eventually I would sit with my feet in a box so the caterpillars couldn't crawl up on me. It was a very authentic outdoor English lesson at the time. Uh, let's see here. Lino says, I think that help out means to help to resolve something and help means to help to do or to do work on something. Not necessarily. Like if I need to do some heavy work, like heavy lifting, it's nice if someone helps out. I would use help out for that. Definitely. Uh, Taurus. Hi, hello, Bob. I see that summer has already come to Canada. Nice weather. Yes, it is definitely summer here. If you look in the far, far distance, all of the trees have leaves on them uh, in the forest across the road, in the bush across the road. Um, and if you look behind me, you can see that I'm sitting under a nice shady tree right now. Very nice. Freddie Wolf, Bob, if you have some difficulties with your network, you could ask the kind spiders around you to help you to fix it. Nevertheless, I hope it wouldn't happen during your lesson. Yes, I think they might be baby spiders and they are all gone now. I'm not, which would mean they're not insects, right? Spiders are arachnids. They're not insects. I think they're slightly different. Anyways, Lolly says, thanks, Bob. John says, I remember that, Bob. Speak English with this guy. Is it just me? I lost sound. Oh, well, let's check it out. Let's see if you have, are the only one. Hmm. I have sound. <laughs> Is it just me? I lost sound. Great question, though, Brent. Uh, hopefully, you get sound back. I don't know how to tell Brent it's him. It's not me, Brent. It's you. It's not me. We can hear you can't hear it's it's you <laughs> hopefully hopefully brent understands the communication i was trying to give uh john says it works here brent says just me it's back oh it, it's working again good maybe brent will get a good laugh out of me trying to signal to him that we can all hear mode yes i distinctly remember that lesson with the caterpillars they were less annoying back then if you know what i mean yeah, I do know what you mean. In fact, we have solved our current caterpillar problem, which is that they were eating our plants. I think the plants grew big enough that they're not yummy anymore. John says, no problem, Brent. No, that says sound is okay. Brent says, sorry, it was just me. Um, whoa, everything jumped on me here. Sorry, it was just me. Still working for me. Sound is okay. So, by the way, um, the this the when i was trying to talk to brent using my hands that is a good technique when you're speaking with someone and they don't understand you like if you're looking for directions um or if you can't hear like facial expressions and hands are a great way to try to assist you when you communicate know that hi mr bob personal question have one of your siblings the same amount of children as you have, but only answer if it is okay with you. Thanks in advance. I have one nephew. Out of all my siblings, I have one nephew. I have the most kids of all my siblings with five. More than enough. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, sound is okay. Hi, Brent. I'm here, says Lino. Uh, flip, so, oh, Filippo says, hey, Bob, I would like to see a lesson where you and Brent teach together. That would be great. So, we had talked about like teaching an English lesson in Niagara Falls or something. And I think the simpler thing for me, <laughs> the simplest thing for me is Brent. It's a little easier for Brent to travel, I think, because of his stage in life, maybe than me. So if Brent came here, I would, I would sit here. I would move over. I, like if Brent came to my house, Brent would be here. I would be here and we would do a live stream together and maybe we would do like a marathon or something like where we would do. So Brent, you're invited. Come to my house sometime this summer. That would be great. Um, how would I see this going? Like we do an hour on your channel and then we, we do an hour on my channel. 
then we do an hour on your channel and another hour on my, it's a little sounds like a little crazy but uh, come on up to the farm brent and we'll do it uh let's see here brent says i definitely got a good laugh literally lol'd yeah if you turned your volume off would you have understood what i was saying maybe uh how can you understand somebody with an accent you have to ask them to speak a little more slowly and it's important yeah this is a tricky one because sometimes you just you might have to ask them to try and say it using different words so to speak slow a little more slowly and to use some different words uh let's see here you mean corporal expression or body language I think maybe that's what you're you're meaning um Philip poses Brent what do you say about that no that says thanks a lot sir expression flick yeah this is a flick oh sorry like if I flick if there was a bug here and I went like this that's a flick um it's really important for a teacher that's my fault Madi says hello Bob again do you have a plan to travel around in the next upcoming years no we need to yeah it's it's hard for us to get away I think I've explained it before where as a teacher I'm busy for 10 months and as a farmer Jen's busy for about nine months but they overlap we don't have time off at the same time of year so it's hard for us to travel Brett says 24 hour English challenge I'm not I'm not it might be me doing four hours and you doing 20. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't know I don't know if I could do 24 hours we could certainly see how far we get um John Wedge I doubt you do Brent it would be awesome Cecilia says hey Bob thanks for this amazing live stream just want to let you know that I really love it when you get technical sometimes I get pretty technical sometimes I go on too long though especially if it's a topic where I know something if I know a lot uh more slowly or slower yeah can you speak slower can you speak more slowly I would say both I think they're both correct grammatically but I would say both like oh I'm having trouble understanding you could you speak more slowly could you speak slower I would say both and I would say it like that could you please or could you it sounds polite and I would probably even do this with my hands I talk with my hands a lot uh John you use Bob's picks a lot says Madi Mode says 410 people pump up those hearts folks yeah that's great I'm actually surprised 410 I usually get around 350 300 so that's really cool maybe people are enjoying the road maybe people are enjoying the beautiful background um let's see here Lolly says thanks Freddie Wolf Bob I wonder if the hand signs are a bit different when you speak French or English it's perhaps a silly question Ooh, this spider's way bigger hmm, okay he's somewhere up there Ah, quand je parle français avec les mains, c'est presque la même chose. I think it's the same. I think c'est la même chose. It's the same. I don't know why I'm doing this, but <laughs> uh, peut-être, perhaps. Um, do you want some pizza? Est-ce que tu voudrais de la pizza? I don't know. I think, I think I would be. I think they would be the same hand gestures. John says Bob's emoji is awesome. There we go. Hey, I should though turn off members only chat. Sorry, members only chat is a fun time. I do enjoy getting to know each of you a little bit better, but we will go back to regular mode right now. Thank you for being members. Thank you for supporting me. I should at some point show you all of the stuff I have outside to do a lesson or to do a Friday lesson because your memberships have helped me to have all that in place. So thank you. John Wedge says don't forget to give a thumbs up folks all of those things help somehow in the grand scheme of things with YouTube uh let me see here let me just check something quickly here yeah okay um next question let me get it up on the screen Peter hi Mr Bob nice to see you my question is how can I use oh used to and used to and despite and in spite and would rather and would prefer have a good day so first of all used to I think always has a d um when you're when you use used to let me double check that um I think used to without a d is actually a mistake um this is the correct is used to not used to so the first one use 
to without the D. We That's just what it sounds like, but you should always say used to. Like I'm used to hot weather now. I'm used to cold weather in the winter. I'm There's actually a D there. Despite and in spite are the same thing. I'm going to do this lesson in spite of the spiders. I'm going to do this lesson despite the fact that there are spiders outside. I did use them a little differently. Um, and then would rather and would prefer. I would rather have a nap. I would prefer to have a nap. They're the same. Those two are definitely the same. But despite, despite the insects, I'm going to do a live lesson. In spite of, I'm adding an of the insects, I'm going to do a live lesson. My first example, I used it a little bit different. Ma- Mahdi says, we want 360 cam. I know, but then you'll see the, the, some of the junk on my property. Like there's some junk over there. I always pick a view where like this direction, there's no junk laying on the ground. So it's a bad, <laughs> if I give you 360 view, people will be able to look at all the spots. I don't want them to see. Uh, let's see here. Um, no, that says, oh, she's talking, ta- oh, no, that's talking to Natalia. Okay. Um, talk Italian says the hand gesture looks more Italian to me. <laughs> Possibly. Renata, je vais bien, merci. Okay. Let me get back to the lesson, everybody. Uh, questions outside. There we go. Um, Juven. Hello, Mr. Bob. How has your day been? Oh, my day has been good so far. I'm glad to come to your live stream here. Can you give me examples to use either and neither or either and neither? Thanks. Have a good weekend, Teacher Bob. So again, I pronounce them two different ways. That's pretty common. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of my common example. When I come outside, I either sit under this tree or that tree. Okay. So it's when you're choosing. Uh, when I make a lesson outside, I use my big cam. I use I either use my big camera or my small camera. Um, when you use neither though, it's something like when, like if I say neither my big camera nor my small camera were charged or neither vehicles have gas in them. So it's a little different when you use that one. I don't know if those were the best examples today, but I'm sticking with those. Ahmed. Hello, teacher Bob. I don't have any question about English, but I'd like to ask a personal question if it is okay. How many languages do you know? besides English. Okay. We're going to flip one word there. Uh, English is my native language and French is my learned language. Those are the only two languages I speak. My mom also speaks Dutch. I do not speak Dutch. When I hear people speak Dutch though, it reminds me of my childhood when my grandparents and my parents would have tea or coffee and speak Dutch. But yes, I only speak two languages, one my native language, one my learned language. From Al Z, hello teacher Bob, thank you very much. Your lesson helped me a lot. Your lessons helped me a lot. Keep the good keep up the good work. Have a nice day. So I I did some fixes in there. This is my English hand motions. Um réparer, I'm not sure what the French word uh, j'ai changé quelque chose des choses dans cette phrase. It's the same hand motion. Um, have a good, yes, I hope you have a good day as well. Freddie, the Frenchie. Hi, Bob. No specific questions so far today. I'm just listening to your answers. For sure, that allows to improve my listening skill. It's definitely a pleasure. Thanks. So, yeah, these lessons can definitely be used in a wide variety of ways. Listening is probably one of the primary ways. Um, it's just, it's similar, I guess, to a podcast. Um, I don't call this a podcast, but it's a long piece of listening where one speaker, myself, tries to speak as clearly as possible. So I'm glad you enjoy them, Freddie. So from AxMD, hello, teacher. Could you please give some different examples of for, to, and with? Thanks. So I bought the present for my sister. I'm going to give it to my sister. I'm going to go to my sister's house with Jen. There's some examples. It is a far bigger topic though than that because we use prepositions like for, to, and with attached to verbs sometimes as well. So me just giving you some examples is great, but it's not the end of learning uh, for, to, and with. I make, I make 
I make these lessons for you. Um, I give these, yeah, I was going to try to come up with another clever way to use all three. I make these lessons for you. Um, I give them to you, but that I don't actually give them to you, do I? Now, let's go back to the gift one. Uh, I bought a present for my sister. I'm going to give it to my sister. I'm going to go to my sister's house with Jen. Let's stick with that example. Uh, let's see here. From Majid Maji. Majid, 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 Majid. Hi, dear Bob. I have, I don't have any question, but I want to say your voice tune is fantastic and I love it. Good luck. <laughs> should, should I become a voice, a voiceover artist? Is that the word? Should I become someone who does the voice, voiceover for cartoons and commercials? I don't know if my voice is that unique, but thank you for the compliment. That is very kind of you. Um... So Daria, hello, dear teacher, Bob. Thank you for your lesson. You're welcome. Uh, they help a lot. Could you please explain a bit on the theme of sequence of tenses? Thank you again for your lessons. That's a pretty big topic that I won't be able to answer here. But what I will say is in terms of time and tenses, you should learn to be able to talk about the past in a simple way. Yesterday, I ate pizza. You should know how to talk about what you're currently doing. Right now, I am eating pizza. I, I wish I was. And you should be able to talk about the future in a simple way. Like tomorrow, I'm going to eat pizza. If you can master jumping around in time, that sequence of three verb tenses, that would be very helpful. But there are more, of course, your conditionals and, your, um, and those types of things. But those help a lot. Johnny, do you love fishing? Any big catch? I do not fish. I caught a fish when I was a kid with a net, but I am not a regular fisher, fisherman in the river over here. I did go kayaking though, um, and I'll probably do a bit more of that this year as well. Um, Mohammed has the next question. It's totally related to the one I just talked about. Hey, hello, Mr. Bob. Why don't you post any grammar sentences videos such as future perfect, future continuous, or past continuous? I'm not a big fan of teaching grammar. I think you should learn grammar. And I think there are some other English teachers on YouTube that do a great job. I primarily like to provide lots of English speaking content that helps you with phrases, that helps you with listening, that helps you kind of understand the language a bit better um, when there's little difficult questions. But I have done lessons on grammar. I had planned to do every tense and I think I did four of them. Um, but maybe I'll get back to it. The videos I make, I have to enjoy making them. And when I make ones about grammar, I don't always enjoy it as much. So that's why. Let's see here. Kania, hi, Bob. How can you use there have been or there has been? Thanks. Love all YouTube demonstrations. You're welcome. So there's, there has been, there has been a lot, there's been a lot of, there have been. So we most commonly use the contraction instead of either of those. So we could say there's been a lot of bugs out here today, or there's been a lot of thunderstorms this past week. There's been a lot of angry people downtown protesting. So there have been or there has been. We almost in spoken English always say there's been. There's been. That's how I would say it. Um, let's see here. Dr. Andrea Ferland. I am enjoying this live session. I've lived in Canada for 25 years, but I am always learning something new in English. I'm from Brazil and I speak Portuguese. Well, hi, and uh, Andrea. It's good to see you. Um, this is actually someone who I met in person. I was at a YouTube uh, conference, I would say, or a workshop this past Tuesday, and I met her and we chatted and it was very fun. So nice to see you here in the live stream. Thank you for leaving a little comment in the chat. That's awesome. Um, let me get back to the lesson though. I have th eight minutes left. I might go a little longer, but I, I do have some work to do today. Next question from Orman. Hello, Mr. Bob. Do you think watching The Office can improve our English? I started watching The Office last week and it's kind of interesting and funny. Love binge watching. So a couple of things. 
The Office has a lot of humor, a lot of sarcasm, a lot of jokes that might be hard to understand for a beginner or intermediate learner. But the show is very entertaining. It's a, a lot of physical comedy, a lot of jokes that you probably will understand. So if you find that it motivates you, that you are binge watching it, it's probably great. If you are not understanding a lot of the humor though, it might not be the best thing to watch. My recommendation is to always, to watch as much reality TV as you can. Reality TV shows like Survivor or The Amazing Race. On a reality TV show, you will hear very authentic conversation. It's not scripted. Whereas The Office, there's a script and people are reading their lines. So it's, it's English, but it's not the same as what we would speak every day. So number one, if you are enjoying it and it sounds like you are, keep watching it. But just remember, it might not be exactly the kind of English people will speak when you go to work or to school where people are speaking English. Uh, let's see here. Ah, it was nice meeting Professor Bob in person. Yes, it was nice. Let's see here. Fabio. Oh, a related question. Hi, Bob. Is there any American TV series you watched and liked it? What like that you would recommend we watch? So I watch a lot of British TV, so I can't recommend that if you're wanting to learn uh, the English accent. But I would go back to what I just said. Um, we, Jen and, just, Jen and I just watched, what did we watch a show? Farmer Wants a Wife. It was about farmers who are looking for a wife. Um, it wasn't the greatest TV, but it was closer to the reality TV genre. Uh, so like the farmer would meet a girl and then they would go to a restaurant and meet her parents and introduce themselves to each other. So very authentic English conversation. So reality TV. Um, I think that show is coming out in Canada and it's called Farming for Love or something like that. We'll see. Levi says, do you think that if we push so hard and with competency, the journey of learning English, could someone like me reach a point like native speakers are at? You can get very close, if not perfect in your knowledge of English and your ability to use it, to speak correctly, to be able to understand everyone. But if you are, I would say in your teens or in your twenties, when you start learning the language, you will most likely always have an accent or slight accent. It's very difficult for adults to completely remove an accent. Quand je parle français, il y a un petit accent. When I speak French, there's still a little bit of an English accent in there. Um, so I'm always jealous of kids who start learning a language at like age 11 or 12. Somehow they can master it. But uh, so you will become equal in competency to a native speaker, but you will most likely always just have just a tiny accent, which by the way, I think is beautiful. I always think hearing a slight accent underneath someone's English is a beautiful thing. Uh, let's see here from Henry. Hello, sir. I want to ask some questions about the hot to use was and where for the sentence because I felt difficult to making sentence. So I'm just reading this slowly because it's a little bit hard to get a sense here. I think was and where is what you're talking about. Like, um, or were, sorry, was and were. He was, they were. So that's a tense related question. You know, he was hot. They were hot. We're talking about something in the past. So was and were, just make sure you look at the conjugation of to be. He is hot. He was hot. He is going to be hot. And you should be able to find a bit of an answer in there. A bit of a tense, uh, tense lesson, uh, verb conjugation lesson. Le frère de Bob, the brother of Bob. Is it still useful? I continue to watch, listen to your live stream and videos, even though I'm exasper exacerbated advanced in English and understand 110% of all you spoke. So I think it's always good if you have the time. I always say one thing about a language. In English, we have a phrase like when you don't forget how to do something, we say, oh, it's like riding a bike. Like you don't forget how to ride a bike. But I don't think English is like that. 
if you don't continually listen to English or use English, it does kind of fade a little bit. It's not like riding a bike. So yes, I think it's wise. I also think if you are at a level where you understand me 110%, it's time to branch out and watch other YouTubers who maybe aren't teaching English, but are talking about something that you like and enjoy. Uh, let's see here. Jordan says, do you think that neuroplasticity is still happening in an intensive way in adulthood? I'm 18. Am I in a perfect time to learn English because I'm still young? Yeah. Any time's a perfect time to learn a language. And I don't always just recommend English. Your brain needs as much exercise as your body. So I think people who do like uh, crossword puzzles and people who um, like trivia and people who read and people who learn a language, you're helping your brain to stay active and you are doing something that's good for your mental health, I think. So, and at 18, you can probably maybe spend more time learning English than someone like me. I'm too busy sometimes to, uh, to spend a lot of time on my language learning. Uh, let's see here. A lot of similar questions all at the same time. What's the perfect age that do what is the, what's the perfect age you think is great to learn a new language like English, for example? I think when you're a kid, if you can start to teach a six, seven, eight year old another language, I think that is a perfect time. And then other than that, I would say the next most perfect time is when you are highly motivated. Okay, so that can happen any time in your life. Learning a language is as much about motivation and having the time to do it as the actual work. So anytime you are highly motivated. Let's see here, Franco. How can I improve my speaking skills? Sometimes I feel that I'm better at reading or listening to others than speaking. You need a speaking partner. Um, I just say that directly. At some point in your language learning, at some point you need to be having regular conversations with an English speaker. Uh, there is a link to Preply in the description below. You can hire someone, you can pay someone. Um, but at some point, that's the next, that's just the next best thing to do. You need to find someone who you can talk to. Uh, let me see here. Next question. Sophia, hello, dear teacher Bob. If somebody speaks very quickly, little fix there. May I ask them, could you slow down, please? Thanks. Yeah. And I, um, I don't even mind if people say, can you speak a little more slowly? Could you slow down, please? I'm still learning English or could you slow down a bit? English is a new language for me. I'm having trouble understanding you. It's not your fault, but could you speak? Could you slow down, please? Definitely. Yes. I think people would kindly do that most of the time. Some people are rude, but most people would be able to do that. From Bob of the Multiverse, and this will be the last question. It's the last question in the form. Um, I'm reading each day three, four hours, listening six to eight hours, speaking in a broad way for seven hours each week, and I need to start writing. I'm doing a great job in that. Yes, but you are right. You do need to start writing. I'm old fashioned in my recommendations. You should be doing a lot of reading, a lot of writing, a lot of listening, a lot of speaking, learning vocabulary as, as quickly as you can, learning some grammar. It is very helpful to learn some grammar, but definitely start on the writing and you will go a long way. Writing is a great way to train your brain how to speak because you have to form sentences, but when you write, you can do it a little more slowly. So uh, keep up the good work. Let me just check if there, nope, there are no more questions. Let's go here. Let me just read through the chat for a minute or two and we will wrap this up. Let's see. It's always interesting to me to read some of what you say. Sometimes I go back and I'll watch little sections of it to read the chat. Um, awesome. Anyways, let's have one more look at the road. It's been a peaceful day. Not a lot of traffic going by. Uh, and oh, there's one small car going by. Let's go back to the screen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out on this Saturday. I will be doing another one the first Saturday of July. So look for that. And again, there will be a lesson Tuesday coming out. There will be a live lesson next week on Friday morning at 8.30 or at 7.30 a.m. Um, and I'm looking forward 
to that one as well. I can't think of the topic. It slipped my mind right now. But anyways, it should be fun. Uh, thanks to being here for being here. Thanks to all my members. You guys are awesome. It's always fun to reward you by having a live stream where you can ask some questions directly. Um, thank you for being here. Anyways, I'm going to say bye to a few people and hit the end button. So bye to Talk Italian with Arone, Cecilia, Dave the Canadian. Thanks for moderating the chat. Bye to Natalia, Emmanuel, Freddy, uh, Andrea was here earlier, Pin, Irina, Wanda, John, Judith, Know That, uh, Lino, Sam, Madi again, Irina, John, Mode Eggs, bye to Mode, bye to Unsel. Uh, I think Vitor was here earlier as well. Bye to Natalia Illusion, Adam. I've also met Natalia Illusion, not in person, but on Zoom a number of years ago. Lots of fun. Bye to Dusne, Augusto, Bastin, uh, and bye to Brent. And Brent, I'm serious. You should come. Um, I don't know. I know you have quite a bit of... Don't you have like a 10-year travel plan where you're visiting all kinds of places? You should put this place here on your list this place you should come you can sit i don't know which side would you want to sit on if brent came what would, would I, should i sit on this side or or should i sit over here what's what's the best what's the best we'll I have to decide which side of brent's face is the most appealing to people and we'll seat him on that side of the live lesson <laughs> anyways uh look for that this summer maybe marathon english lesson with bob and brent who knows if it happens it happens uh anyways thanks everybody uh bye to freddie wolf uh patata uh, let's see here anybody else i've missed jason lee and everybody have fun bye <laughs>